Hi everyone, I'm Danielle Jensen, the Mom Ambassador Liaison at Moms Meet. Thanks for joining us today for the So Delicious webinar where you will get your questions answered by John Pierre, celebrity fitness and wellness guru, and Hillary from So Delicious. If you have any questions, please be sure to type them into the chat window. With that said, John, please take it away. All right, thank you. Thanks everybody for being here. I'm excited to share some information with you today. And my book that has recently just come out, The Pillars of Health, actually took me 25 years to write. So I've actually been working on it a long time and I've been teaching nutrition and fitness for that long, 25 years. I've been following a plant-based diet for actually 30 years. And my specialty is really in geriatrics, uh, enhancing cognitive function with seniors. But a good portion of the population that I do work with, I do work a lot with kids and I do a lot of programs for like Girl Scouts or after school programs. Basically, I'm trying to basically get these kids to start having a little bit more affinity toward fruits and vegetables and healthy eating. And you'd be surprised how similar the geriatric community is to children. They're very similar, even though they're on the opposite spectrum of age. They're very similar. They have a lot of the same needs. Um, so today I want to do is just talk quickly a little bit about each chapter in my book. And the first chapter is on nutrition. And one of the main things that I am trying to get across to the average person is that most of our diet today is processed foods and animal products. About 90% of our diet is either processed foods or, or and animal products. So one of the challenges with that is that only leaves 10% of our diet for vegetables. And the government has considered a serving of french fries a vegetable. And the government is also considered a serving of ketchup or tomato sauce a vegetable. So realistically, Today in America, the average person is maybe getting 5 to 6% of their diet at plant matter. Now, when we look at the people who live the longest in the world and have the least disability, 90 to 99% of their diet is plant matter. They eat maybe 1 to 10% of their diet as animal products and 0% processed foods. And you have to remember that there's not a speck of fiber in any animal product and there's barely any fiber in processed foods. So that leads to a very serious condition called constipation. Right now, about 4 million Americans are constipated. We're spending about $700 million a year to deal with constipation, so buying laxatives and so forth. Now, when children get constipated, oftentimes they'll get a compact, their, their colon will get compacted, and they have to go in to a physician and things like that. It's important to understand that not only is that uncomfortable for a child, but it's down, downright deadly. Because if your child cannot get rid of toxins and poisons in their system, those syst your, their system basically just absorbs it back into the bloodstream and causes toxemia or what's called auto-intoxication. And this is a big problem because, again, since most of our diet is animal products and processed foods, most of these foods are loaded with chemicals. And when you start looking at mercury and PCBs and you look at other heavy metals, you look at arsenic, when those can't get extracted out of the body and they get absorbed back into the system, that's when we start creating neurological problems and all sorts of damage with the cells. So we need to remember, we need to increase with these kids high levels of fruits and vegetables in their diet. You need to increase the volume of it. But they're not going to sit down to eating plates and plates of broccoli and cauliflower and salad. So the easiest way to do that for kids is to make sure that every day they get a green smoothie in. So it doesn't matter what type of blender you have. It doesn't matter how cheap or how expensive it is. I have them all. I have the Blendtec, the Vitamix. I have a $14 blender. You're paying for the motor, which is fine. So if you want to get the best one, yeah, pay more for it. But basically anything for right now will work. So what I do is Basically, I'll, I'll just take so delicious coconut milk, and I'll use that as my base, and sometimes I'll use their almond milk. And then I put in my greens. So I put a handful of kale or bok choy or collards, and then I blend that up. Then when that's done being blended, then I might add in a little ground flaxseed, so a good, good source of healthy fats for the kids. Because remember, these omega-3s are critical to form the myelin sheath. The B, vitamin B12 and this omega-3 forms this myelin sheath, which basically allows neurological impulses to flow and Basically, that's what keeps their brain healthy. So adding a little flax into the smoothie or even walnuts would be good. Then once we have that blended up, then we can go ahead and add some fruit in there. So we want the highest antioxidant fruits we can get in the United States, which generally be berries, so any sort of berry. And I usually recommend using frozen berries. And if you can get organic berries, that would be ideal. And then we blend that up. And then I add a little sweetener. So the sweetener might be a couple of fresh whole dates. Or I may even add a piece of mango or something, but a little bit more sweetener to make it palatable. It really doesn't matter how much fruit you add into the kids, whatever it's going to take them to drink it. So I don't really care what you add in as a sweetener other than 
you know, a Spartan or something too sweet. We don't want that. But whatever it's going to take the child to get in more volume of vegetables is what we need. So if you could start doing that on a regular basis, that would be a step in the right direction. And the same thing is if you could start making blended soups for your kids. So basically you just get a soup base. Now I prefer something like tomato, maybe tomato juice or carrot juice or celery juice, or you could just use a you know, one that you buy at the store that's a plant-based one, and I put that in the blender. Then I start blending in my greens or broccoli or carrots or celery. And the reason why I'm blending it is because a child will drink more volume of it than if I ask them to eat the whole vegetable. Now, when I'm working with people who want to lose weight, then I don't want them to blend it. I want to put whole pieces of broccoli and cauliflower and carrots and celery and mushrooms in the soup without blending it because it's going to take them longer to eat it, hence they'll get full faster. But for children, I want them to get the best bang for their buck. So we blend it, and basically I add some beans in there. I might add some rice or some pasta, and then I serve that. But that's a very high-nutrient uh, broth that they're consuming since most everything is blended in there. So if we could do those two things, that would be a big step in the right direction. But please make sure you understand that animals have a bowel movement once, twice, three times a day. Some kids that I'm working with are having bowel movements every five days, every week. And many times they come in, they have horrible skin problems, they have bad, bad uh, lethargy, they're very tired. This is all forms of toxemia. These are, these are toxins that are creating these problems. So you want to be having a regular bowel movement. Your child should be going to the, to the washroom every day. And the only two foods that don't have fiber in the entire world are any animal product and then processed foods. So any food that grows from the earth is high in fiber. So any fruit, vegetable, beans, peas, lentils, potatoes, nuts and seeds, it's all fiber. So in the, in the beginning of my book, I really talk about the dangers of processed foods, the dangers of animal products, and I try to encourage more plant-based foods. Remember, it's pretty easy to do today to follow a plant-based diet because we have all these wonderful products that are so delicious. And when I started 30 years ago, I had to put orange juice in my cereal. There wasn't any almond milk or coconut milks or anything like that. And remember, the most constipating food for a child is going to be dairy products. There's a substance in there called casein, which is a protein, and it's a very binding protein. As a matter of fact, it's actually the protein that they use to make glue out of. So it does the same thing in a child's intestinal tract. It creates a lot of binding. So when you have a child that's eating animal products and milk products and, of course, processed foods, and that's when we run into a big problem with that constipation. So animal products, we want to reduce as much as we can. We want to increase the volume of vegetation. And the most important animal product to get rid of the diet absolutely would be dairy products. There's more problems linked to dairy products than any other animal product. And if you want to be fair about it, really call dairy products what it is. It's a, it's a hormonal secretion from the bovine. So you're drinking the milk of another species, and that's where we run into a problem. Because that milk is, from a composition standpoint, isn't the same as human breast milk. So goat's milk, cow's milk, all these different mammals that produce milk, it's different for each species. And one of the challenging things about dairy products today is the way that they're actually breeding these cows today. They're breeding them to have a higher levels of insulin-like growth factor, and I'll explain that in a minute. But they're also then injecting them with insulin-like growth factor. And when you start seeing girls that are eight years of age pre-developing, that's one of the reasons, because insulin-like growth factor is probably the most powerful hormone in the body, and it causes acceleration of all cells. So when the dairy industry says, hey, milk builds strong bones and you know, muscles, well, there's some truth to it, but they forget to tell you that it also causes acceleration of all cells. So if you take insulin-like growth factor and you put it on breast cancer cells or prostate cancer cells, they grow like wheat. So that's one of the concerns today is what we're seeing with milk. It's not the same type of milk that we drank 200 years ago. But even if you get milk today without, natural, without drugs being added, you're still taking in the hormones and antibodies from a bovine. So there's no such thing as milk that doesn't have antibiotics or, or hormones in it because the cow naturally produces those for her baby to take a 60-pound calf and help it accelerate its growth to a 600-pound cow in less than a year. So I would recommend that you start using the So Delicious. You know, I like the coconut yogurt and the, uh, coconut yogurt with a little bit of fruit in there. I like the coconut ice cream. And then, of course, I use the almond milk and the coconut milk for pretty much everything I do, whether it's recipes or adding it to my oatmeal or whatever. So that would probably be a little bit of information on nutrition for you. And the next section of my book is interesting because that's dealing with the mind. And this is very closely tied to nutrition. 
my specialty is really in enhancing cognitive functioning in seniors. And in my office for the last seven years or so, I've seen younger and younger people coming in with attention deficit, hyperactivity, very violent, inability to think and focus. And then I've seen people in their 40s that are starting to lose all their mental faculties, their, their, especially their memory. They just can't remember anymore. They can't focus. Well, if you have a nutrient deficient diet, if you don't have the right B vitamins and nutrients, you don't have magnesium, you don't have B12, this is what, these, are, these are nutrients that help basically create your brain's functioning. For instance, neurotransmitters are created from B vitamins. So if your child is low in B vitamins, it won't form the neurotransmitters you need to think clearly. So from a nutrition standpoint, we have to be right on with this because if your child is low in just one nutrient, that can cause a cognitive problem. Just like when you open a combination lock, you can't be off by one digit. It has to be dialed in precisely. So from a nutritional standpoint, what's good for the heart is good for the brain. Focus on getting your child lots of healthy fruits and vegetables, lots of berries, because berries enhance neuronal communication. They also repair damage that's occurred in the brain. Make sure they're getting a good amount of B vitamins, so beans, peas, and lentils. They help create neurotransmitters, and they help the brain function. But from a stress level, we need to remember that children are stressed just like adults are. And the more stress that a child has, the higher level of cortisol that's released from the adrenals. And cortisol actually eats away a portion of the brain called the hippocampus. And that portion is deeply controlling memory and creativity. So when we start pouring all this cortisol through these little kids all day long, because, you know, you have parents today who are making their children take violin and piano and soccer camp and martial arts and then doing, you know, four hours of homework. It's like that's really not normal for a child to be able to do that. Their brain and their body can't handle that amount of stress. So we're really setting up a child for disaster with that. So I have a whole section in the book designed to enhance cognitive functioning. Now, as a parent, all the same rules apply to you because you're busy, you're eating improperly, you're not getting the exercise you need, you're not doing things that help enhance creativity. So that chapter would be good for, for parents as well as kids. The next section of the book is one of my favorites because it's on movement. And I want you to ask yourself how many people are listening to this right now are sitting down because sitting is really the new smoking. It's more disastrous than anything we can do. You know, if you think about it, you're sleeping in the bed seven or eight hours. Then you get up, you're eating breakfast, you're sitting again. Then you're driving to work, you're sitting. And then you get to work and you're sitting. And then by the time the day ends at 5 o'clock to come back, you just repeat the process. And then when you get home, it's the same thing. It's mostly sitting. So what we need to do is we need to get our children to get out of that chair as much as possible. Sit on the floor, change your posture, sit on a Swiss ball, the big physio ball that kids play on. Get used to that. And get out of the chair. Make sure your kid is trying to get off, off the floor all the time. For you as a parent, one of the biomarkers of aging is the inability to get off the floor. If you can't get off the floor very easily, it's not a good sign. So you want to make sure that you're practicing getting up and down off the floor as often as you can because that's a really critical thing for you to do. When we look at Indonesia and Asia, the people literally squat down and that's how they sit. They don't have furniture like we do here and then people say, well, they don't get arthritis and everything because they're Asian. No. They don't get arthritis and things because they're continually moving and their diet is different than ours. They don't have the same type of food that we have and they're moving all the time. If you go to a gym an hour a day, well, that's wonderful. But my concern is what are you doing the other 23 hours of the day? Because if you just go to a gym, most of the time when I'm at a gym, I'm seeing people sitting on a bicycle or they're sitting on a bench press or they're doing some sort of exercise where they're sitting again. So they're continually sitting. So get your kids off the couch don't even allow them to sit on the couch. Let them sit on the floor and play, roll around, and get used to moving and stretching because children today are getting very, very inflexible. As a matter of fact, the military has actually lowered the standards for young men and women to get into the military because these young men and women couldn't pass the physical fitness test. So it's, it's very sad. And I had a boy come to my office that was 12 years old, 270 pounds. And it was very sad to see because the boy could, could barely ambulate, could barely walk or move. And not only was there a whole host of physiological problems he had to deal with, but could you imagine the emotional problems that he had? And what I did is I actually got a balloon and blew it up, and I took him in the hallway, and we'd start hitting it back and forth. And it was the first time in the session, you know, after a half hour, he didn't say anything with his parents and was really depressed. But once I got that child moving with a balloon, he turned alive and he was happy. But his parents probably had him engaging in activities that weren't fun to him, wanting him to run around a track or something like that. You have to get your kids engaged in activities they enjoy. 
And kids enjoy things that are fun, like bubbles and balloons. Same things that I've done with retirement homes. Engage their mind and, and kind of forget that they're so-called exercising. So you just want to do something that's fun. It doesn't matter if you turn on music and they're dancing or whatever. But either way, and that goes for you as a parent, you need to make sure that you're moving as much as possible too. So the last section of my book then deals with the biggest deficiency we have in not only the United States but the world today, which would be our lack of compassion and love. And when you look at the poisons in the air and in the water and the food, they really pale in comparison to hatred, anger, jealousy, rage. I mean, these are omnipresent everywhere you go today. From the minute you turn on the TV to the minute you open a newspaper or a magazine, we're continually bombarding these kids with negativity. I mean, there are children today, and it's not uncommon for children who still believe in Santa Claus to be watching pornography. Kids are playing vi video games where they're in the video game, they're actually having simulated sex with a prostitute, they're shooting police officers, they're running over animals when they're driving, and they're getting rewarded for this. And then you have children listening to gangster rap music. That's triple X music. So when you couple all these negativities together and you wonder, is there any reason why a child wouldn't be violent? Because this is exactly how the military trains soldiers to become violent. So what we've done is we basically are creating predators today, and we have to be very careful of what we allow our children to watch on TV, what type of music we let them listen to, because it's not the same as when we were kids. And the music today is very dark and it's very violent. It talks a lot about suicide. It talks a lot about hurting animals, a lot about hurting women. So we need to be very conscious of that. And I always say sticks and stones can break your bones, but words can tear your heart apart. And you have to be so careful because I've worked with abused women for 30 years. And more women that I've worked with have been hurt by their husbands or their boyfriends or their father's words more than they were from a fist. Because every time we hear a word, we get an image. And then that image creates a physiological change. It's like when you watch a scary movie, how is it possible that your heart starts racing, your palms are sweating, and your fists are clenching? When you're just looking at a celluloid screen, there's no boogeyman. Because your brain doesn't know the difference between what it sees on the screen and what's happening for reality. So it creates a physiological change in the body. And that's very dangerous because every time the adrenaline gets kicked in, testosterone level, growth hormone factors, all these things cause damage in the body because they're designed for fight or flight. You're designed to be stressed once a month by a saber-toothed tiger chasing you. But now our children are being stressed from the minute they wake up to the minute they go to bed. And they're, they're basically programming their brain with all this negativity, and they start seeing the world this way. So it's very important that you as a parent spend time with your child and using words of love and compassion and holding your child and holding their hand and giving them positive, re, reaffir, you know, basically reassurance. And one of the things that I ask parents to do is to sit down some Saturday and Sunday and sit with your child and help them make a positive collage. So just get some different magazines and go online and print out some different pictures or words that are empowering to your child. And then you just put it on basically poster board and then have them put that up in the room. Because every time they see that, it's an anchor to something positive for them, whether it's a positive role model or a positive word or a goal that they have. Actually, for my clients, they probably make five to six of these for all around their house. They put one in the bathroom. They put one in their workout room. They put one in their car. I even have people make small ones that they carry in their purse so when they're sitting in a doctor's office, they're looking at it. So they're always countering the negativity that society is giving us. So this is just a positive way to counter it and to help reprogram the brain. And it's important for parents to sit down with their children and talk at meals, ask them what's going on with school, what's going on in their life. You know, find out what's actually happening in your child's world because this is where I think we're lacking today as parents is that we're so busy and we're, we're, shoo we're shooing our kids off to different piano lessons and different type of activities. And by the time they get home, they gobble some food down and they have to do homework and they go to bed. And we don't have any more quality time with them to talk. And that's what kids need the most. You know, when I've worked a lot with very wealthy people and their children will say to me, you know, John, my parents buy me everything. We have anything we need. But you know what I really wish is that my parent would come to the soccer game with me. I wish my parent would cook me a meal and sit down and talk with me. And it's very sad to hear that because, I mean, you have to ask yourself, what, what type of children are we creating then? And then who are those children going to gravitate to as friends? And when they start getting depressed, what are they going to use to alleviate depression? 
Are they going to go to sex or drugs or something violent? Because they're always trying to change their mood. And that's one of the things that a parent we need to be concerned about is, you know, really the welfare of our child's emotional state. So the last chapter of the book is the most important because I think that every person that I've ever worked with could use improvement on that. And I worked on that every day too. You know, when I was a kid, before I would go to bed, I would kind of just close my eyes and bullet point, what good did I do today in the world? And I would ask myself, you know, what good did I do? And then I'd kind of list it. And then I'd ask myself the most important question is, what good could I do tomorrow? So I was always focusing my camera or my brain on good. I was trying to focus it always on what's, you know, what's good in the world, not what's bad, because we're just, we're just subjected to a ton of negativity all the time. So that last chapter, I think, is well worth reading once or twice and maybe even reading it as a family, reading bits and pieces to your kids, because a lot of kids who have heard me speak before about that can really come up to me and say that really motiv- that motivated them the most to make changes in their lives, and they're going to rethink the children or their friends who they're hanging out with and the TV shows that they watch. So that's kind of a quick recap over the book, and I'm definitely here to answer any questions that you may have. All right, great. Thanks so much, John. That was such a great presentation, and we have a lot of great questions coming in. So the first question we have is, where can our mom ambassadors order your book? Oh, okay, great. Well, my website is John Pierre, so it's J-O-H-N-P-I-E-R-R-E dot com, and the book is The Pillars of Health. It's on there. And then I also have a, um, I also have a six-hour DVD, which is called, Eat, um, if you go to eatunprocessed.com, you'll see me on there. Um, I've done that with a chef, Chef AJ from Los Angeles, and it's a six and a half hours of basically when you put it in your, your DVD player, Every day we give you a new recipe, I give you one new exercise, and then we talk about one topic. And then you kind of get some homework, and then the next day you get it, another one and another for 30 days. So one of the things that's important is that you always have some sort of support system and education going on. So that's the whole reason why we made that one. And then my other website is livingwithharmony.org, and that's my 501c3 to help kids and abused women and uh, animals. Okay, great. Thanks for all those details. We have a question for Hillary from So Delicious with a mom ambassador wanting to know just generally where are So Delicious products sold, which stores? Um, we are available nationwide in stores like Whole Foods Market, Sprouts, Kroger, which operates under a lot of different names across the country. Um, you can find us in like ShopRite or King Supers or Safeway. Um, and I think that pretty much covers it. Okay, great. And we have some ambassadors wondering how many flavors of the ice cream do you currently carry? Uh, well, it depends on your base. So we actually make ice creams um, with three different bases right now. We make soy-based ice creams. We make coconut milk ice creams, which are soy-free. And we make almond milk ice creams, which are also soy-free. And... Um, I'd say the coconut is our most expansive um, collection. We have about um, a dozen flavors of coconut milk ice cream, including um, the world's only gluten-free, dairy-free, egg-free cookie dough ice cream. We also have a brand new gluten-free cookies and cream that just came out in all three bases, in soy, in almond, and in coconut. And um, we also have a line of sugar-added ice creams with a coconut base, and those are sweetened with monk fruit, um, which is an all-natural, non-caloric fruit sweetener. So they actually only have one gram of sugar per serving. Um, My personal favorite is our no sugar added fudge bars because we add chicory root. So they actually have eight grams of fiber. Um, They're only 80 calories, and they have one gram of sugar. So to JP's point about... um, fiber and and processed foods don't generally have fiber. We're actually adding fiber into um, foods to get it into into folks. Okay, great. We have a question for John here. Um, Some ambassadors wanting to know your opinion on what is the biggest advantage to going dairy-free? Oh, well, like I said, the, the worst animal product that you could put in your body would be dairy products for sure because it has the highest rate of allergens in it. Remember, when you're taking a foreign protein and putting it in your body, your body doesn't acknowledge it as, as human. So it, it rejects it and creates, creates inflammation and mucus 
creates an allergic reaction. And again, you have to ask yourself this very simple question. If you just get this one point, you'll understand dairy completely. What is the purpose of a human being drinking milk? In other words, why are we, why are, why are we doing it? And people will say, well, we need calcium. Well, okay, if that's the case, then have you ever seen a full-grown cow drink milk? So you're drinking the milk of a full-grown cow, but it doesn't drink milk. So how does it get its mystical, magical calcium? And the way it gets it is because all the minerals in the entire world are found in the earth. So when you're eating foods that grow from the earth, you're getting the minerals you need. And particularly calcium, I'm not as concerned about calcium for osteoporosis as I am. Where's your boron coming from? Where is that trace mineral coming from? You know, where is your zinc coming from? These are other minerals that we need. Or vitamin K, where's your vitamin K coming from? These all form the integrity of bone. So it's not just calcium that builds bone. As a matter of fact, the Bantu women in Africa, they breastfeed on average about 10 children in a lifetime, and they breastfeed all those children, which is a huge mineral strain on them. And they only consume on average of 400 gram, um, milligrams of, of calcium a day, and they get that from plant sources, so they're not drinking cow's milk. So how is that possible that they don't get osteoporosis? The reason we have such high rates of osteoporosis in the United States is because our diet is so acidic, we get no activity in our lifestyle. Our vitamin D levels are, are done because if you think about it, we're inside all day, so we're not getting sun exposure. And, and remember, dairy products do not naturally have vitamin D in them. They synthetically fortify them with vitamin D. So in a nutshell, that, that's kind of the, the lowdown on dairy. Okay, great. Maybe a mom ambassador wondering if you have any tips or tricks for trying to get you know, her kids excited for eating healthy. Well, one of the things I do with parents is I make sure that they involve their children in the kitchen. So you have to get your children involved in making the smoothies. So you put all the ingredients out on the table and you say, hey, honey, what would you like to add to this? What would you like to add to the smoothie? Okay, go ahead. You go ahead and pour the So Delicious almond you know, beverage in there. Pour that in there. Now, which of these vegetables would you like to add? Okay, you add the piece of kale. When children you know, are playing and they have a, a hand in making things, they're more likely to be excited about it. And remember, too, you have to understand that children, and this is a harsh word, but they're addicts. The food industry has taken a food, well, not a food, but a substance like sugar and caffeine, and they've combined it into something soda pop. So you have the two most addictive substances we can, is sugar and caffeine. So when children are addicts at a young age, it's going to be hard for them to gravitate gravitate toward healthier foods. It's kind of like if you're using drugs your whole life and you're on stimulants and speed, it's very hard to come off that because you've always been used to a high. So you have to start children as young as you can, and you basically just have to kind of meet them halfway. You, know, you can't just really force them, but you have to you know, kind of throw some, like, like I think the So Delicious yogurt, everybody loves that. I mean, who doesn't like that? And then I just try to sneak in some berries with kids with that, and it's, it's a winner. And of course, the, the coconut ice cream, I mean, that's that's so good. So it's, it's pretty easy today, actually. But the only thing you have to be careful is remember you're fighting the food industry. So you've got all these cartoons and commercial characters that are on the logos of cereals and things like that. And children are being manipulated to, to just want those and think they're the foods they should eat. Okay, great. We have a question from my mom ambassador wondering um, if she's trying to start cutting the amount of dairy in their diets. Is there one certain product she should start with? Is there one that's worse than the other, whether it be milk or cheese, or are they all equally bad? Well, cheese is concentrated dairy, so that it's higher, you know, more dairy in it. And remember, one of the reasons why dairy is so hard to give up is because it has a substance in there called casomorphine. And casomorphine is basically an opiate-like substance that you're addicted to. The reason why human breast milk has it and cow's milk in it is because if you were to breastfeed your baby and your baby wasn't attracted to your breast milk, well, the baby would die. So nature has been very intelligent by putting casomorphines, which are basically natural drugs that you're, you're, you're drawn to. So your baby suckles and then your, your baby's always drawn to that. So cheese has one of the highest amounts of those casomorphines in them. So I use like a Gaia cheese, which is basically a, a vegan cheese. So I use that, but I would only use it melted. It doesn't taste very good unless it's melted. So cheese would be one of the first ones. And obviously it's so easy. I have a lot of parents, well, what they'll do is they'll actually take a milk container and they'll dump out the milk and they'll actually add like so delicious in there. And then their kids don't know the difference. And a lot of, a lot of clients that I work with do that with their husbands all the time. And so their husbands actually think the non-dairy creamer that So Delicious makes is a regular milk creamer, but they didn't tell them that they actually changed it. 
So it's whatever you have to do to, within reason to get your kids off dairy would be your best bet. Okay, great. And is there anything specific you should add into your diet when you cut back on dairy as a substitute? Well, again, you're consuming dairy products in the hope or belief misconception that, you know, that's the mystical magical calcium. But again, ask yourself, where are the cows getting their calcium? So they're getting it from green leafy vegetables. So kale and bok choy and spinach and a handful of nuts and seeds, those are all wonderful sources of calcium. And again, you don't need a lot of calcium if you don't have a lot of calcium feed. So if, you're not, if you don't have an acidic diet, you don't have tobacco, things like that. So when you eat healthier, you won't need higher amounts of calcium. Okay, great. We have a question for Hillary from my mom and Baxter wondering what other types of products besides the ice cream does So Delicious make? Uh, we have the broadest selection of dairy-free products available. So we have um, quite a number of different beverages in coconut milk, almond milk, and cashew milk. We make a culinary cooking milk that's USDA certified organic, so that's a great um, option if you're cooking recipes that call for canned coconut milk, um, but ours actually comes in a Tetra pack, so you'd find that in the, the Thai cooking section. We also make um, uh, yogurts, cultured products, so we make coconut milk cultured products and almond milk cultured products in creamy formulas and um, sort of a thicker Greek style formula. We have coffee creamers in almond milk and coconut milk, and um, we make some holiday um, beverages that are outstanding that are all egg and dairy free too. So um, we make an eggless nog that's a fraction of the calories, sugar, and fat of traditional nog um, and no cholesterol because it's all plant-based. Okay, great. Thanks for giving us details on all of this. And we have another question for you, Hillary. I'm from a few mom ambassadors wondering if you have any plans to remove the ingredient carrageenan. From your product? Yes, so, so I'm really glad to get that question. We, um, just to let you know, our commitment is to have a completely carrageenan-free line of products, and we've been working towards that. So for those of you who aren't familiar with carrageenan, it is a seaweed derivative, and it's an ingredient that's used in a lot of different products. You'll find it in dairy products as well. Um, it's a thickening agent. And um, there's been some concern in recent years from consumers. It can cause digestive distress um, in some folks. And so about two and a half years ago, our team started working um, to take carrageenan out of our coconut milk beverages, which are our best-selling products. And at that time, um, the USDA um, Organic Standards Board, so this is the the board that determines what ingredients are safe and allowed to be used in organic products, did a review, a re-review of carrageenan. Um, carrageenan is something that's been used in food products since the 30s, um, but the in, in organic foods, they took a look at it in the 90s, they said it was safe, and then they took a look at it again about two and a half years ago and determined again that this was a safe ingredient for organic foods. But our team really felt that it was important to remove carrageenan and that we had listened to our fans who had requested that carrageenan come out. And so we started really what has been a labor of love um, over the last several years to reformulate um, our coconut milk beverages which, you know, since they're our best-selling pro products, it's a big deal to actually create a new recipe. And it took us a while to create a recipe that we felt was equally as delicious and um, carrageenan-free. So those started rolling out into the refrigerated section of grocery stores in January and is available in all four flavors. Um, we're now working on um, the shelf-stable versions to roll that out. And... The really good news is we have a lot of products that don't have carrageenan, quite a few, and we list those on our website. Um, and also, we launch um, dozens of new products every year, and so we've not launched a product with carrageenan in it since before November of 2013. So you'll find um, in every single category where we have products, you'll find a carrageenan-free option right now. So if you love our coffee creamer, we just launched an almond milk coffee creamer that's carrageenan-free, um, and that just hit stores about a month and a half ago. Um, you know, 
most of our ice creams are carrageenan free, like our entire line of coconut milk ice cream. The no sugar added line, we're working on getting the carrageenan out of there. So it'll take us a little bit more time, um, but we hope fans will continue to be patient and that they'll find many, many carrageenan free options within our line. And, and the guarantee is that we will have a complete carrageenan free line, um, hopefully fairly soon. All right. Well, that's great news. Thanks for going into the background on that. We have a question for John. Uh, a few moms are just wondering if you have any easy, healthy, on-the-go snack suggestions for their kids. Sure. It depends on what age they are and if they have sensitivity to, you know, to any foods. But one of the foods that I use a lot with kids is actually hummus. So I try to use a lot of different dips. Hummus would be one, salsa, black bean, guacamole. Those are great to have on either like a, a natural whole grain bread or a rice cake or just vegetables because this way they're getting a good amount of B vitamins they need via the beans. And then if you're concerned again about minerals, the sesame seeds that are ground up and create tahini, that's our, one of the richest sources of calcium on earth. And then you have garlic, of course, which is antibacterial, antiviral. And then you have the lemon, which is high in vitamin C, which is enhances the iron absorption from garbanzo beans. So it's actually one of the most perfect foods is actually hummus. Um, nuts and seeds, if your kids can have them, would be good, but they have to be chewed to a cream consistency. You just don't want them swallowing them whole because you want to absorb the nutrients then. And again, I really like the So Delicious, uh, the coconut yogurt as a snack because they have so many different flavors. And then the Greek style is a little bit thicker. And then I usually, once the kids get used to that, we see if we can ask them to add in some berries or some fruit of their choice in addition to the fruit that's already found in there. Okay, great. Thanks for those suggestions. We have a question for Hillary, wondering if you have a store finder online and if they don't um, have a store located near them, if they can find your products online to order? Yes, actually we have a great store finder on our Facebook page. Um, it's excellent. It not only tells you what stores carry our products, but it will go down to the actual product itself. So if you're looking specifically for like a flavor of our yogurt to see if it's carried in a store near you, you plug in your zip code and it will actually tell you if it carries that particular product and it's on our website. The store finder is also on our website or on our Facebook page. And we just started selling through Amazon, um, which we're really excited about. So you can buy our shelf stable, stable um, beverages and products through Amazon.com right now. Okay, great. We have a mom ambassador uh, wondering if you sell holiday products and when will they start to be carried in the stores if you do? We do. Um, we actually have um, a couple of really exciting things going on for holiday. So we have three holiday beverages. They're all made with coconut milk. So they're, it's all made with organic coconut milk. Our entire line, I should mention, is non-GMO project verified. So you'll never find any GMOs in our foods and beverages. And the holiday beverages are the eggless nog, the mint chocolate, um, and a pumpkin spice are the three flavors. And then we have some really fun, I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek at this. Um, we have not announced it yet, but they'll be coming out probably in about a month. We'll have several um, holiday um, novelty frozen desserts on sticks that are fun flavors and fun shapes, um, also made with organic coconut milk. Okay, great. Very exciting. We have a question for John. Wondering if you can recommend certain foods that can help to boost energy. Well, that that's a challenge because when we think of energy, it's kind of like, our, my main question is why is the child or the individual tired? So are they dealing with food allergies? Are they not getting enough sleep? Are they overworking? Are they stressed? But generally when we eat something like a complex carbohydrate, like a slow-cooked oatmeal, that's a great way to keep your blood sugar steady. If you have oatmeal at 7 in the morning, most all my clients still report that 10, 30, 11 o'clock, they're still feeling energetic. What we want to be careful of is foods that are high in sugar because they give us this super spike and we have all this energy, and then it comes plummeting down, and then we get hypoglycemia, we have low blood sugar, and then we're really tired again. So you, you want to basically always be controlling the insulin in your bloodstream, so you always want to keep a steady, steady stream. And that's when these whole grains, the whole complex carbohydrates work really well. And again, things like vegetables and fruits are ideal to always get in, but I think we need to be careful with kids. When they say they're tired, we need to try to look at why they're tired. We just don't want to give them an amphetamine, and now they have energy. 
So that's what a lot of people do. They'll take coffee and tea, and they, they, they can't function without it. Well, my question is why? What's missing in their lifestyle? Because it's not always just diet. A lot of times it's just lack of sleep. Okay, great. We have a question for Hillary. I'm wondering where the So Delicious headquarters or factory is located and if you offer tours of the facility. Our headquarters are in Eugene or Springfield, Oregon, sort of right on the, on the border. Um, and we have the world's largest exclusively dairy-free ice cream facility. Unfortunately, we don't give tours. Um, you know, it's something I, I'll put in a request to our customer service team to let them know that people are interested. I can do that. Um, we don't currently have tours, but I, I have heard from some folks that would be interested in touring. So I will definitely bring that up with the team and, um, and see if it's something we can do in the future. All right, great. We have another question for you, Hillary. Um, so Mom Ambassador is wondering if you have dairy-free recipes and if they can find them online. Oh, yes. We have a amazing collection of dairy-free recipes. Um, Facebook is a great place to, if you have not joined our Facebook page, it's an, it's an excellent community. Um, there are so many reasons to join. We have a tremendous recipe um, sort of portfolio in there. We share recipes from amazing chefs and bloggers every single week. Um, all the recipes that we share are plant-based recipes, so really great ideas for getting more plant foods into your um, kids and families. And um, we also, um, I'm trying to think, on our website we also share recipes as well, so you can check there. And we, we do come out with a little um, sort of cookbook um, usually every other year. Um, and we give away a lot of cookbooks also through our Facebook page. So it's, it's a fun place to, to win great prizes. We give away a lot of VIP product coupons and, and fun prizes for folks too. So definitely check out our Facebook page. Okay, great. And do you have coupons available for So Delicious? We do. Actually, if you contact our um, customer service um, team at info at SoDeliciousDairyFree.com. We have awesome $8 off of So Delicious products in a coupon brochure, and we'll mail those out to you. So those are great. And the other thing is on Facebook, um, if you ask for coupons, I think there's an electronic coupon that they can send you a link that you can print out. But if you want like pretty significant number of coupons, the coupon brochure is excellent. It's $8 off of a whole variety of different products. Okay, great to know. We have a mom ambassador wondering what's the best way to keep in touch with your brand and do you have a newsletter? I'd say the best way is to join us on social media. Um, and, you know, if you are interested in being part of a, we do an e-blast, like an email blast, probably four times a year. But I think Facebook is one of the best ways we do People who join us on Facebook um, are really quite rewarded. We do a lot of different fun giveaways. Like this summer, we've been doing really fun giveaways every single week. So every Thursday, we are giving away a non-GMO food as a prize. Um, and we partner with some amazing companies. Like we've given away Wacky Apple Organic Fruit Snacks with last week's giveaway, Bean Fields, um, Chips, um, Dr. Bronner's coconut oil. So really working with a lot of really awesome companies to give products away. And, and we also give So Delicious products away at the same time. Um, and then, you know, we have additional prizes for things all the time too. So definitely join us there if you're on Facebook. Okay, great. And can the mom ambassadors find the customer service email you were talking about on the website or is there a certain email they should reach out to? Yeah, you can find it on our website, or you can just email info, I-N-F-O, at SoDeliciousDairyFree.com. Okay, great. Thank you for that. We have a question for John um, from some mom ambassadors just wondering if you had a general amount of exercise that their kids should receive per week. Is there just a general um, you know, number of minutes they should receive a week? No, there's no general minute. It's just basically being as active as they can. So they should, as long as they're not sitting in front of the TV and playing video games and things like that all day long, they should be outside running around and playing, you know, some sort of sporting activity or some sort of hobby where you're physically active. But again, if you look at primitive people, 
they're moving from the minute they get up to the minute they go to bed. And if you compare that to us, we're allocating a half hour to an hour for movement. So you just you just want to keep the kids moving. Just sit them on the floor, make sure they're always playing and doing something. Okay, great. We have a question for Hillary. A few mom ambassadors read online that you have a world-class allergen testing program, and we're wondering if you could go more into detail on how that works. We do. We have a great allergen testing program. So um, the allergen community is really very, very important to us, and we have a lot of fans that come to us because they have allergies to milk or eggs, or their children have allergies to milk or eggs. Um, and so, you know, we also are making a lot of gluten-free products as well. Our entire line is gluten-free right now except our ice cream sandwiches, and we're working on that. Um, so hopefully we'll have some news on that at some time in the near future. But um, we really recognize how important it is because people often arrive at dairy-free because they have an uh, intolerance. So um, there's great information about it on our website at SoDeliciousDairyFree.com that really will go into a bit about how we do our testing. Um, to give you an example, for our gluten-free testing, we will test to five parts per million. And the USDA for gluten-free certification only requires that company test to 20 parts per million. So we actually test to four times more stringent than USDA labeling guidelines for gluten-free certification. So it really is very important to us. Um, and uh, we really have been setting a precedent in the industry for allergen testing. Okay, great. We have a few more questions here before we wrap up for the day. So we have one for John. In your opinion, what is the biggest biggest danger to eating processed foods? Well, the main thing is the more processed foods you eat, the less fruits and vegetables you'll eat. So if you think about it, if you cut an apple in half and set it on the counter, it starts to brown. That's oxidizing or aging. So if you cut an apple in half and squeeze some lemon on there, it will not brown or oxidize because the high level of ascorbic acid and antioxidants that are found in that lemon. And so every time that you're eating processed foods, you're pro-oxidizing. You're basically creating a disease in the body. You're accelerating your aging. You're pre-aging. And every time you eat fruits and vegetables, you're, you're basically halting aging or slowing down the aging process. So that's one of the challenges with uh, processed foods is they don't have any nutrients and they actually have anti-nutrients. So every time that a child eats sugar, and the average American eats 150 pounds of sugar per person per year, every time your child eats sugar, magnesium, chromium, B vitamins are being gobbled up to turn that sugar into energy. Well, that means then your child is being, they're being, basically their brain is being hurt because all those B vitamins that are needed to form neurotransmitters and help the nervous system are gone. So processed foods are very, very dangerous because of that reason alone. Okay, great. We have one last question here for Hillary. Um, we, you know, I know you had said before that your products were non-GMO project verified, and we had a mom ambassador just wondering if you could go over exactly what that means. Sure. So um, genetically, GMO stands for genetically modified organism. And what those are is that um, they are when a company like Monsanto has created a technology where they take DNA from a pesticide and they cross it in the laboratory with DNA from a crop like corn and they'll make a new species that would never exist in nature called GMO corn. And what we're seeing, these have only been on the market since the 90s. Um, so GMOs didn't exist when most of us were growing up. And there are no long-term health studies on what the impact of these GMOs are doing to children. And they're really prevalent in our food supply. So it's like, you know, over 85% of corn that you buy on the market, same with soy, um, and the same with sugar beets, which is, you know, the ingredient for sugar, are um, GMO. So it's very, very prevalent in, um, in packaged foods. And then certainly, you know, if you're not buying organic produce, it's prevalent there as well in a lot of produce corn, soy, and um, sugar particularly. And because there are no long-term health studies, we just don't know what the impact is on our children. Um, what we do know is that the reason that they've created these, these um, species, GMO corn, GMO sugar beets, is because they're intended to fight off um, pests 
in the fields and that they're able to spray Roundup pesticides on the crops and everything that's a pest or a weed will die, but the, the GMO corn will survive that onslaught of chemical spraying. And then we eat it and we put it into our bodies. And yet we don't know what it's going to do to our bodies. So Soto Dairy Free has been committed to non-GMO project verification. Really the, the ways that you can figure out if you're avoiding GMOs in your diet are to either buy organic, because GMOs are not allowed in organic foods or, or packaged goods, or to buy products that are certified through non-GMO project labeling. So there's a, an organization called the Non-GMO Project, and there, are, there is a symbol um, that you'll see actually on my slide, you'll see it says Non-GMO Project Verified with a little flower. <laughs> That's the symbol you would look for on packaged goods to make sure that you don't, you're not ingesting GMOs or that your children are not ingesting GMOs. Um, it's becoming more and more commonplace for people to understand what's going on with GMOs and I think there are about 28 states now that are working towards getting legislation so that companies have to label if there are GMOs in their products. Right now they don't have to label. Um, you know, the organic companies have to go through three years of rigorous testing to get a certified organic logo on their product, but the GMO companies don't have to tell us that they're serving us GMOs. So a lot of states have been collecting signatures from voters to appeal to put this on their ballot in November. Um, so Delicious is based in Oregon, and we've been working hard to educate folks on the importance of labeling. We think it's really important that people have a choice and that they know what's in their food. Just like you want to know how much salt or sugar is in your food, you should also have the right to know if there are GMOs in your food. And so we've been working really hard to educate folks. It's one of the reasons on our Facebook page every Thursday we're giving away GMO foods as a, as a prize. Um, and we were really excited. We had to get 150,000 signatures in Oregon, and we did. And so now it will be on the ballot in November for Oregon voters to determine whether um, whether the, the labeling law will be passed. But um, that gives you a little bit of background on, on GMOs. And just to comment quickly about that, um, it's very important to understand that when you are taking all these crops that are heavily sprayed with pesticides and herbicides and these cows and animals are being fed GMO crops, you're taking about 12 to 15 pounds of grain and that turns into a one pound burger. So when your child who has a little tiny liver and spleen and detoxifying organs, they're trying to detoxify all these amounts of pesticides and herbicides, that's a massive problem to their neurological system. And it's one of the reasons we see so many more neurological problems occurring in children. And then, of course, we're seeing more problems with infertility in young, younger and younger people. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, John and Hillary, for answering everyone's questions and for the great presentation. Do you guys have any closing thoughts before we wrap up? I think that's it. But, um, you know, thank you guys so much for taking the time with us today. And, and do keep in touch with us online. Um, because we'd love to be able to send some products your way. Yes, and it's so easy today to make these healthy cha uh, changes in your kid's diet because of all these wonderful products that Like So Delicious has. So it's so easy to make the changes. You just need to go out and get them and just kind of experiment and see which ones your children's like. Okay, great. Well, everyone attending, thank you again for your time. And to the mom ambassadors who are sampling So Delicious, we're really looking forward to your feedback. We're going to go ahead and log off now. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.